Hello everybody, my name is Mike Kanick and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. Well, I almost said the Great War. Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiserreich, uh, where we are continuing on as the Commune of France. Uh, I do want to thank you guys for all the support shown on the first video. And I did get some good comments uh, that I want to address and make some changes with. Uh, the first was that I should really be paying attention to the line of forts along our border with Germany. And as I discovered, it's not just along our border with Germany that we have to worry about. Uh, it's also along the border with, um, well, what is now called Flanders Wallonia. Uh, because they are in a faction. They are in Reichspacht uh, with Germany. So here I was thinking that we didn't even really have to worry about up here in the Netherlands, you know, Belgian and and all that, but we absolutely do have to worry about that. So let's have a look here at uh, the land fort level, uh, and we do have some forts in place, but I was certainly recommended uh, to put some more in, and maybe here. No, that's that's not necessarily a frontline province, but definitely let's increase. The fort level there to five because we do not want to lose uh our northern coast we certainly don't want to lose our northern coast because that's a major province of ours uh where else i guess what we should do is bring all of these up to level five but looking at this uh, let's try to do this the most efficient way possible that tiny little province there uh, that has a three-level fort may not be worth it. I would rather build the fort behind the river. Considering the fact that we have very limited uh, construction capability, let's try to build it behind the river. And, you know, if we lose that province, so be it. Um, because there's only three there. I'm Well, no, no, we're, we're going to stick with that. I know it may not make sense to some of you, but to me, it makes perfect sense. So, here we go. Let's get that up to also level 5. And I think that's good. Um, yeah, the Swiss in this one are still neutral. They have no faction. No faction whatsoever. And I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get those built. Uh, I do want to prioritize the building of the civilian factories first but i mean after that uh it's it should have been made clear to me just by watching that uh yeah these guys are not necessarily our friends because they are lining up on the borders now the second tip that was given to me was that we need to start making friends uh our faction uh the third international is somewhat strong uh our allies are the uk and the socialist republic of italy just basically the northern northwest half of italy those are our friends we don't have anyone else whereas the germans i mean look at this all the members of their faction obviously they have uh the netherlands up here Oh, what do we have? Okay, it is clear that Black Monday has hit the Austrian Empire hard. Austro-Hungarian uh, Reichskrieg's minister, yeah, today announced he was recalling divisions stationed in Italian territory, unable to afford the financial burden of keeping them safe from of the Socialist Republic of Italy. For good or ill, the Italian Republic is now effectively independent of Austrian domination, at least until the Austrians regain their full strength and decide whether or not their interests in the Italian peninsula are worth regaining. Many of the Italian Republic have expressed worry about whether or not this will leave them exposed to attack by the Socialist Republic of Italy, a move which would plunge Italy in a civil war once again. Ah, oh, Jesus, guys. Okay. Yeah, this makes things a, a lot more complicated. Okay, so Austro-Hungary, who are they friends with? They're not in a faction, but they are green with basically everyone around them who would have been occupied in the uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire in World War One. 
But we were looking at the Germans. We were looking at the Germans to see what they have going on. Okay, yeah, they are allies with basically all of the Eastern Bloc. All right here. And can we be friends with the Russians? Would that make sense? We could invite them to faction. Okay, now we need world tension at 80% and it's only at 4 And they need to have syndicalists greater than 30% and they're only at 8%. So they're not going to be our friends necessarily. What about the Ottomans? The Ottomans. who uh, Paternal autocrats. Yeah, these guys. Oh, damn. That's, that's too bad. I was really hoping uh, to make a uh, alliance with the Ottoman Empire this playthrough, just you know, to kind of connect the playthroughs together um, from the last one. But that's fine. So anyway, let's get. Oh boy. Okay, Sebastian Ferre's resignation during the inauguration ceremony of the new Comte de Salut Publi at the uh, Borst here, the chairman Sebastian. Ferre has announced he would propose his resignation, as many claim that the internal division within the executive branches of the commune, Ferre is an anarchist, was the primary cause of political crisis. The two favorites to succeed him are the trade unionist Leon Jano and the Civil War veteran Benoit Fachon. Um, well, we just dealt with Benoit Fer Fajon, I don't know. I We don't want an anarchist. I know that much. Hmm. Yeah, well, neither of them are anarchists, but... Uh, let's go with the syndicalist, which... Oh, it's... Duh. Both of these options. Recruitable population factor minus 2%. No, we, we can't use that. But the other debuffs here, resource gain efficiency, production efficiency, factory output. Yeah, oh, jeez, guys. These are two very bad options that I, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to. So let's just do it. Rip the bandaid off. We're going to take him. Okay, next. Let's go ahead and have a look at our front here. Um, obviously, I thought we only had to main the German border. I was wrong. And what are we looking at here? Yeah, this is the army of uh, all of our trained guys. All of our trained divisions. So it looks like we have some more trained up here that we're going to take off of the training army. Is it only three? Oh, no. There's six. Nice. Okay. And we're going to have to extend that front, unfortunately. Um, and I'm going to put them all into this army here. And I know that may put us over. Yeah. Puts us over by, by two. And that's okay. Because here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to extend this front. All the way up here. And then, you know, once we get a little bit closer to uh, wartime, we're going to worry about that front a bit more. And we'll probably divide it into two... Possibly even three armies. I think. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Alright. Let's get that done, guys. And we got some planes flying around. Is that us? I just want to make sure. I know it likely is. Because I know I'm training. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's just our planes training themselves. Perfect. That's good. Now, I, I do want to look at our navy again here because we are training these guys and they have gotten to level two experience which is good except for one of our destroyers here which i'm sure uh caught fire or some nonsense okay that's good to know uh for our doom stack navy we are likely going to have to split this up in a two three maybe even four different navies in order to get them trained because i don't want to train I'm sorry, I don't want to trade the amount of oil that we're going to need to train all of them at once. That just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, but let's see how our production's doing. Uh, we did adjust it fairly well uh, last episode. And we are producing tanks. 
Now, speaking of tanks, guys, we have two division templates that we're using right now that actually do use uh, light tanks. And that is both the motorized and the cavalry. And the cavalry I am getting rid of. And the sole suggestion I got for getting rid of the cavalry is turning the cavalry divisions into occupation divisions. Which I'm torn on. Because part of me says it's too early to start making occupation divisions. Particularly when our job is going to be defensive. But it would put all of those light tanks back into circulation uh, if we traded these divisions in and just made them an occupation division for let's say example uh, I don't know 6 infantry and an MP battalion that would be great for occupation but I just don't know if that is what we want to do just yet particularly because uh, army experience is so hard to come by but I think we are going to do something along those lines. That includes getting rid of the tanks from our cavalry. So, okay. Uh, the League of Eight Provinces declared war on the left Kuo Kuomintang. Kuomintang. Ah, take that, left Kuomintang. Uh, the Shandong clique declared war on the League of Eight Provinces. Okay, so we have a three-way war happening. Interesting. Uh-oh. Now what? And we declared war on the Nanjing clique. Yeah, okay. It's just like World War One all over again, except not our problem, which I'm really happy about. Yeah, so we'll leave them to their devices. That's too bad for them. I'm very sorry they're in a war. Okay. So, uh, back to this. Uh, the Cavalry Division. Well, first let's get the... Uh, train divisions out of here Which, yeah there shouldn't be too many of them ah there we go plus our mountain divisions excellent and I do want to have a look at our mountain divisions by the way let's let's see what their template looks like because we have a lot of changes to make here oh boy okay they're 12 combat width and they do have artillery support much like our regular infantry division. No, our infantry divisions have uh, 18 combat width. And depending on what our production looks like, do I want to do this yet? Do we want to put them up to 20 width? Can we put them up to 20 width? Okay, now that would probably be a really dumb move to do right now. Although, I don't know. I don't know. We do need to get them to at least 20 combat width. Whenever it is that our conflict with the Germans and the Dutch kick off, I don't want to be in a position where I have to change up the vision design. I would actually like to do it earlier. But of course, again, that depends on uh, army experience. Yeah. So... We're going to have to wait for that, and in fact, we're waiting for uh, our divisions to train, which is what's giving us all our army experience now, but uh, I was also tipped off that it would be a good idea, and I agree, uh, to intervene in some conflicts that are going to be upcoming. One is a conflict in Spain. Two, uh, from what I gather, America actually has a second civil war. Now, I don't know who the factions may be, but let's take a look here. Oh, wow. Look at that pie. So, yeah, they have a little bit of everyone. America is completely divided along these lines. There are authoritarian Democrats. There are social conservatives. There's market liberals, social liberals. Uh, social Democrats, radical socialists, Jesus, syndicalist, hey! Okay, so perhaps uh, in the upcoming Civil War there will be a party of syndicalists that I will gladly get behind. Uh, not only will that give us probably war support, that will also give us a great deal of uh, army experience and give us a hand in, uh, you know, how that war plays out. If we could get uh, the United States to go syndicalists. 
that would do a great deal for our uh, for our faction. And in fact, I might be able to invite them to our faction after that. Or can I now invite a faction? Yeah, now we're, they need to be at 30% uh, syndicalists, if I recall. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what is it? Yeah, syndicalists have to be 30% or greater. Okay, so we have to wait. Uh, a peace deal has been signed between the Dominion of Canada and Afghanistan, ending their hostilities. Okay. So who who won? Any any Afghanistan? Okay. What what is their situation? They are now. They have a truce. That's it. Okay. So it's basically a white piece. So they tried to take on the dominion of India, and it just did not work out. Uh, Gallo seizes control of Ecuador, seemingly unwilling to stand by and watch as the relatively liberal government under. Ayora's uh, PLRA risks enfeebling Ecuador. Alberto Enrico's Gallo has launched a successful putsch in Quito. Having already dissolved the administration and created a new council of military advisors, the new military strongman has quickly begun embarking on a quest to purify Ecuador of alleged threats and opponents. Okay, good. This. Okay, so Ecuador, who are you now? Let's see. Yeah, they're pretty divided up. The PCE, social conservatives. Yeah, I'm not sure how this guy pulled that off. I hope that they come around to uh, our style of ideology soon, but I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so our political power is increasing, and we do need to do something with it. Now... Here's the thing, guys. There's, We have two lists. Things that we want to change and things that we can change. Uh, what I would like to change is the limited conscription to go to um, extensive conscription, which we could do, I believe. No. Yeah, we have to be at war. and Okay, so we cannot go up to extensive conscription. Conscription. You can't do it. Um, all right, here we go. National focus, the communal army. This is the one that I really wanted to get done. Base war support plus 5%. Um, there we go. And that was where? The communal army. So we can now go down these centralized high commands. And again, the first thing, our, our benefits from this will not be immediate. But they will be great. I would like... Uh, I would like to do the uh, the International Congress. But we cannot do that at the moment. Uh, the next one I would like to do is this one. Um, yeah, this gives us uh, consumer goods factories minus 5%. Factory output plus 10% for 230 days. Next. Uh, restoration of democracy in Australasia. Okay, this does not affect us. I know what that one is, but it does not affect us. Okay, so we're good there. All right. Uh, yeah, what were we talking? We were talking about Ecuador, which that could be a flashpoint for uh, future conflict for us. But the death of Pius XI... All Christendom mourns the death of His Holiness Pope Pius, who died following... Okay. Yeah, how terrible. All right. Um, so, yeah, here's what I want to do. I think we have enough divisions here, particularly those that are still training. And here's the thing, guys, is we're going to switch up the division design, and they're going to have to train again. But just for the sake of organization... That I would like to get out of the way. Let's get everybody a little bit more organized. Okay. So let's get all of the light blue divisions up here on the border with um, with the Netherlands. Let's put them into their own army. That's going to be a new army. And we are going to call them... 
the Northwest Army. Uh, actually, technically, that should be the Northeast Army. There we go. And what's next? Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, that did what it was supposed to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and give them a front here. Ooh, no, 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 no. Yeah, we gotta edit that. Uh, let's take that down by one. And why why don't you work? There we go. Not to start and make sure that extends up to Calais. Okay. Is that good? All right. Northeast Army. Uh, well, one, let's change their color. Uh, let's give them a nice deep red color. And give them... Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's give them Henri Rotangay. How the hell you say that? There we go. I tried. Okay, and now... For this army, I believe... Yeah, this is the trained-up army. Let's shorten their front. And take them all the way back down to... Uh, just the border with Germany. Okay, yeah, they're all the way up here. Ooh, can we get... Can't... There we go. And let's put it there. There we go. Alright, and we need to give them a commander as well. And let's, since he's facing the Germans, I'm giving them the uh, level 4 general, uh, Nestor Machno. And they will be named the German Front Army because they fight Germany. And we are going to have to make that decision soon with what to do with these cav divisions that are in here. But, again, it really comes down to army experience. What we can and cannot do. Uh, for... Yeah, for the German Front Army... Sorry, guys. I'm going to get their color right. Mm, let's do dark blue. Okay. That'll be easier to differentiate rather than that um, like light greenish, whatever the hell default color that we usually get. I do not want that. And let's go ahead and give these guys uh, an offensive line so that they can get some planning bonus. And we'll put them all the way up to Amsterdam. What? I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did that not work? Interesting. Okay. No, we're doing this. There we go. I guess. Okay. No offensive line. Why is that not working? Come on. All right. Well, can I give an offensive line to the German front army? Yes, I can. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Put all 19 divisions on that one. Uh, what? Okay. Maybe I just cannot go. Maybe I can only go through here. Yeah. All right. I cannot. I can't go past um, Belgium. I'm sorry, Flanders, Wallonia. Yeah, that's much better. That's better, guys. All right, La Troisme International. We've been preparing for the third international since 1927. Now we are nearly ready to hold the first Congress right here on Montmar Montmartre Hill in Paris, but. On the ruins of Sacre Coeur. For three days, the city will host delegates from almost every socialist, syndicalist, and Bolshevik party from all across the world. Okay. Uh, wow, that's a lot of negatives, but Kingdom of Hungary. Okay, so all the non socialist countries will not like us, but we will gain 16% base stability if we do it. And I'm more concerned with that than everyone liking us. So let's host the Congress, guys. Why would we not? Look at that stability. So much better. Now, okay, let's have a look at our uh, our Navy here. Are they almost done training? 
No. They're really not. Okay, what about the Air Force that we had training? Okay, well, no. Yeah, they're both up to just regular. Just regular. That's fine. That's fine. No template. Support equipment still. Uh, we do have decisions available. Uh, we don't really want to make either any of these decisions. We don't need improved worker conditions, do we? Or do we? Maybe we do. Uh, factory output minus 5, dockyard output minus 5. Okay, so it's basically the same as vanilla. But we really need that stability, guys. I mean, look at this. I think that's a short-term sacrifice for a long-term gain. But let's have a look at what else we possibly could get. Okay, yeah, industrial companies... Yeah, you know what? Actually, it may be more worth it to uh, get industrial concerns and maybe some of these companies done. I think it would almost certainly be far better. Weapons manufacturer. Okay, yeah, let's save up. Let's save up. I think there will probably be events that will increase our stability so that we're not spending... Um, Political power and production power on it. Because that's two things we cannot spare right now. It's goddamn ridiculous. Right? Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's just not something we should or... We could or should do. Um, Alright. So we still do have armies training. Or uh, divisions training. And that's good. But you know what we don't have, guys? Is... Uh, any kind of division training which we need desperately and I know that look I know we're short on manpower but uh, let's put them in uh, Paris and let's go ahead and do it that way we I think we can only really afford to train one at a time um, yeah I mean we don't need Marines uh, we we might need Marines later but we should give them a commander since they are here in their own army um, do we have any generals who might give us a bonus for Marines? And I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing the typical... No, we're not going to give them a field marshal. Commando. Oh, no, for especially for Marines, yes. The commando uh, trait, which gives an out-of-supply bonus of 20%, is definitely worth it. And let's leave them there. Actually, they need to be training. I just realized they are level 2. Man. So, guys, as far as picking allies goes, obviously the Russians aren't going to do it. Uh, we cannot either do the Ottoman Empire. We might... Wait, what's the Sultanate of Egypt? Yeah, it's, it's going to be difficult, guys, to, to figure this one out. But let's go ahead and go... Yeah, let's go to the country lists. All the syndicalists. We have Chile. We have the Patagonian Workers' Front. We have the Socialist Republic of Italy. And the Union of Britain. So Chile... We... Ooh! We could get a non-aggression pact with them. So let's do that. They could be our South American ally. So what happens next? We could guarantee their independence, but again, I want to save that political power. I think uh, it's a lot more potent in our hands. Uh, we could improve relations, but why can we not invite faction? Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, world tension needs to be at 80%. It's currently at 4 Okay, yeah, well, we, we can't do it just yet, but look at the syndicalists. They're at 47%. That is well over the threshold, so let's go ahead and maybe deal with them later. Okay, Pius XII elected as new pope. Okay, the first congress of the Third International. It is time to invite socialists and syndicalist leaders who will be coming from all around the globe to attend the first congress of the Third International. All right, so we are inviting Georgia, the Bahara 
Bharatiya Commune, Mexico, Union of Britain, Socialist Republic of Italy. Thank you guys for coming. You're the best. Okay, so let's... Uh, do we want to do this? No, I would rather get uh, our advisors first before we uh, really start to solidify things with Chile. Although they could make a decent ally. At least one more person for uh, our enemies to worry about. <laughs> if we're talking about that. So, okay. Now that we have the political power. Guys, uh, what do we want? Electronics research speed plus 15%. Chemical company. Um, industrial company. And what, what do you give us? Military factory construction speed. Civilian factory construction speed. Okay, not bad. Not bad, but what do we want here? Infantry equipment, artillery. Hang on, guys. Hang on. Mechanized equipment manufacturer. Oh, wow. Okay, so there are some really powerful uh, boosts here, but I'm just not necessarily seeing the one that we want. Um... Yeah, we should go for industrial concern, and I do want to increase the speed of our military and civilian factory construction, plus 10% industrial research speed. Can't beat it. There we go. Okay, choosing a host city for Spark Guitar. Oh, French city, of course. Which French city? Is there any other French city? Paris? I know, I, we could have got uh, main, another... <laughs> Another uh, infrastructure in one of those other cities. But I like Paris, okay? So now we wait to see what happens here. Um, I'm hoping as a result of the Third International Congress that we will get some stability increase. Okay, all the delegates have arrived. So let's start it off, guys. Let's start it off. Let's all be good socialists. <laughs> And talk about socialism. I don't know exactly what's happening at this Congress, but I also don't need to know. I'm just glad it's being hosted here. The chairman of the Committee de Salut Public takes the floor. Okay, now that everyone is assembled... Oh, gain base stability. There we go, guys. Plus 20%. Although we do lose out on relation with a lot of other countries. And bigly, too. By a lot, but... You know, you cannot beat a 20-plus gain in base stability. Look at that. Yeah, division organization, factory output docu... Okay, yeah. It's all getting better. So, you know, I'm not upset with that at all. I'm actually quite happy. And I regret nothing. Okay, so... Oof. Yeah, we're still trying to build that civilian factory in uh, Paris, Ile-de-France. But, okay, syndicalism in Spain. Joaquin Ascaso uh, Budria has taken the stage and elaborated the position of the CNT... Hang on, hang on, one at a time, you guys. Of the CNTFAI is the largest syndicalist party in Spain, made up of anarcho-syndicalists, moderate syndicalists, and trade unionists. The Spanish revolutionaries have seen a white terror... Violent counter-revolutionary actions taking against workers firsthand. They have come asking for support of their cause when the moment comes. Huh. Okay, so we can support who they're talking about, but Spain, as it stands now, gets a minus 30 opinion of us. They're right on our border, guys. I really do not want to piss off. The Spanish, and... But I do want them to be syndicalists, so yes, let's have some balls and do it. Sorry. Okay, uh, the left command declared war on king. Alright, more conflict, drama in China. Yeah, oh jeez, look at this mess. Look at this mess. Yeah, we got... We don't really have any, um... Friends that you could say are over here. Although we could send volunteers. But do we want to? Okay. Uh, the Shandong clique is mostly paternal autocrats. No, no, no. 
No, no. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, the syndicalists. What about radical socialists? Hmm. Uh, the left quote. You know what? These guys are at least in our ideology department, you could call it. They're left wing. So the radical socialists, yeah, I feel like we should send volunteers. Right? We can send one. It's one division, guys. It's one division. And I would like to support them. Let me make sure. Yeah, the left Kuomintang. Yeah, they are communists. They're left wing. We can do that, guys. We can so do that. All right, let's send one of our regular infantry divisions. And let's give him... <laughs> let's give this infantry division its very own general. And let's go ahead and send these volunteers. That way we can start to get some real deal army experience. Yep, there we go. All right, our troops are on the way, guys. Did you hear that? Hopefully they don't capitulate before then, or we can escape or something. Eesh, I don't know about that one. All right, um, back to training again. I do not want to be wasting any fuel or casualties on training. Okay, John Jack Reed and the Combined Syndicates. American journalist, poet, and syndicalist activist John Jack Reed spoke to the Congress for an hour and 15 minutes about the crisis facing the... United States and the chance for revolution in the Western Hemisphere is following the footsteps of Benjamin Franklin. Mr. Reed laid out the situation in America very clearly. In the South, the America First Committee is stronger than the central government, and the North is suffering from a depression as the West Coast prospers. This economic imbalance has caused a massive unemployment has caused massive unemployment along the Great Lakes, and the people are ready for a radical change. Ooh. Okay, so a modern-day Benjamin Franklin, they have our support. No. No, I am not meddling with America. They are potentially far too powerful. And from what I gather, America is going to fall to pieces shortly anyway. So, no. Guys, we are not going to mess with... We're not going to meddle in American politics. I'm sorry. Yell at me if you want, but we're not. Okay, unemployment and radicalism in Latin America. The Latin American countries... With the hardest hit of all the stock market crash in Berlin, and there's been a great awakening f among the people. Socialist and syndicalist parties grow larger by the day, paired with unemployment. We should decide our policy in Latin America, where left-wing radicalism is ripening. Yes. See, we're already kind of uh, in league with Chile, so let's begin to nurture syndicalism in Latin America. Uh, and what, if anything, does that do to our relationship with uh, Chile? Hmm. Okay, well, look, we're, we're good buddy buddies. All right. Women's role in worldwide revolution. Today, the British feminist Helen Crawford took to the stage with her flaming speech about the women's role in world revolution. According to her arguments, without women's participation in industry and armed forces, it may be impossible to defeat many enemies of the proletariat. Uh, proletariat, I'm sorry. However, heeding this call is likely to cause some disturbances among the more conservative elements of the society. Huh. And this... Okay, right now, all it's showing us is what happens at this decision. We can either gain negative 6% stability, or we could gain 2% stability, but also, in the long run deprive ourselves of women in the factories. So let's take the stability hit now while we can afford it. Yeah. Man, that is a lot of events happening all at once. But, guys, I'm looking at the clock and we are all out of time. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing uh, and please leave a comment. I need all the help I can possibly get in this uh, playthrough, this campaign, uh, there are a lot of decisions to make. And uh, if you happen to know of any that are upcoming or that I screwed up outright that wouldn't be cheating, then let me know. 
I love you guys. Bye-bye.